Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The only people in the world who know not who they are, except that they're African American, are the true biblical Hebrews. Without understanding who Israel is, it is virtually impossible to understand all the prophecies that are within this book that are essential for you to gain eternal salvation or to have an opportunity to gain eternal salvation. You know, Paul said in Romans, the 10th chapter, he said that Israel had a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. And in God's word, it says that Israel was for signs and for wonders. And you know, growing up, I grew up in Chicago in the 60s and 70s, and I used to wonder why this African American or the Negro or the black uh, race was always down, why they would never come up and, and, and prosper. They were always like kicked to the curb. And it used to, it used to weigh on my heart sometimes. I used to wonder about why this would happen. How come they were always down and they could never get ahead? They could never prosper. You know, a building would burn down in my neighborhood within a year or two, there'd be a brand new building there. Something would happen in an Israelite neighborhood or what I came to understand as being Israel, the African American or the Negro or the black race, building would burn down or something would happen in their neighborhood and it would stay that way and it would never come back up. And I used to wonder about this and it wasn't until years later when I came into the true word of God that I understood why that would happen. You know, Deuteronomy the 28th chapter it talks about uh, the Lord makes his covenant with Israel and then he tells Israel in the beginning of that chapter if they obey him, obey his voice, and do what it is that he is laying out for them to do, that he would bless them and they would be the head and all other nations would be the tail. It was originally set up for Israel to be obedient to the Lord so that everything that they would touch would prosper and all the other nations would come unto Israel and would say, you know, why is it that all your crops are always plenteous and all ours are always just coming up and they're so-so? How come everything you touch so-called turns to gold and everything we do, we're struggling at. And then Israel would turn around and would teach them about the true and living God. But when Israel got disobedient, at the end, from the middle of, of uh, Deuteronomy 28 to the end of Deuteronomy 28, you have what the Lord called curses. And again, remember that these are for signs and for wonders. These are for signs to who Israel truly is. Do you know that Moses was mistaken for an Israelite? Paul was, mis or for an Egyptian, mm -hmm. Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian. And when you go into history, history proves that Egypt was a dark race people. They weren't Arabs. They were a black race of people. And that's why Israel was mistaken for Egyptians. I don't know if anybody knows this, but Egypt is actually in Africa. And the old kingdom of Egypt was founded by Africans. You can have a look at sculptures, paintings, just geographically where the people came from. It was Africa. They were black people. If you think that this is a one-off problem in cinema, you'd be very wrong. Pretty much every movie set in Egypt or Palestine is completely whitewashed. There's no brown people, black people in any of these movies. There's too many to list. It's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty f up, to be honest. If you think that it's not a big deal and you think that it's normal for movies set in history to be whitewashed, I don't know, just imagine what it would be like if you watched Thor and had an entirely Asian cast. It'd be kind of interesting idea, there's, because again, there's no movies with Asian casts in English-speaking countries, but it wouldn't really make any sense. I think that this problem is actually a lot worse than just historical inaccuracy, though. If you look at what's been happening in the media recently with um, how black people have been treated by police and the media, there's been some debate whether or not they're actually misrepresented in media. And it's stuff like this that kind of cements the fact that they are and that we are trying to erase history from other cultures and claim them as white history. I think that a lot of black children, white children, um, and adults are going to watch these movies and seriously think that now white people created Egypt. 
which is just not true. Uh, white people have a really nice history of our own. I don't think that we needed to take anyone else's history. Um, but above that, I think that currently in the state of America, and not just America, but worldwide, the way that we see black people is a group of people that have no real history that's substantial to the world, whereas they pretty much invented civilization, culture, medicine, paper, basic things that we take for granted, uh, black inventions. But that doesn't matter because we've got a nice movie with some guys from Game of Thrones in it, which also doesn't really have a black cast. The only black people in Game of Thrones are pirates and rapists. I don't, I don't know if this video is going to change anything or fix anything. I would strongly suggest that you don't watch this movie or any movie set around the Bible, Egypt, or any kind of story in those areas because we have all these movies with with entirely white casts set in black and brown countries and it's always kind of been like that and it seems to be that nobody really gives a shit. I mean, that's just what I thought about um, this film. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. You saw what I showed you. You can have a look at your own stuff. If you seriously think that white people created Egypt, you're an idiot. So, I don't know what else to say, but yeah, I hope you don't watch the movie. Ancient Israelites and ancient Egyptians were in fact black. And when you go into history, history proves that Egypt was a dark race people. They weren't Arabs. They were a black race of people. And that's why Israel was mistaken for Egyptians. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, when you start talking about the curses, it talks about in Deuteronomy 28 that their sons and daughters would be given to another people and that they would see this happening but would have no power to do anything about this. When you go into the history and you look at the history of slavery, this has always happened to the African American or the Negro or the black race. So is it that you think that the people over in Israel, that those, um, that worn torn land, that those are the true Hebrew Israelites? That in 1948, that's what's God gathering his people and making Israel a nation again? Because no, that ain't gonna happen until the end of days when he gathers his people from the four corners of the earth. We're coming in and makes a multitude. Majority of them, they're all white. We got a problem here now. We got a problem. Because you change the people, you most certainly change the message. You change all the prophecy. You change all the prophecy. That's like when people try to interpret Daniel and all these things, they fall off at 1948. Because you put them as the people of the book, such as the Christians. Put those Jews as the people of the book, as the ancient Israelites. I mean, they're calling Abraham a Jew for, for crying out loud. Oh, but so, I, I, hey, I'm going to cut this short. It's just interesting. I don't expect you all to hear me anyway. But you, you, you Israelites out there, you be very careful when you have a, a man in front of you that won't address who the true Hebrew Israelites are. They're up to something. And you know that those people over there in that land of, of Jerusalem right now, that that's a synagogue of Satan being trodden down by the Gentiles. See, you got to know the book. And you change the people, you're changing all perspective and prophecy. And anybody that's supporting those people over there as the people of the book, you watch out because they're supporting the devil. And that's just the truth. 
And you go and mock and jeer, and you won't sit there and you won't answer the question, who are the true Hebrew Israelites then? You little panel out there that sit there and make these videos. The Bible is all about nations. So maybe that's where your heart's wicked and wrong. See, you, you, just ain't, you just ain't being taught right. You avoid these things, and it's what you won't say that's going to condemn you. You need to know who the true Hebrew Israelites are. You need to go and study. I don't need to make this go 40 more minutes trying to teach you who the true Hebrew Israelites are. There's enough messages and teachings out there on it. And if you go read your Bible, you'll clearly know who they are. You can't hide a white Jesus in Egypt and expect him to blend right in. It ain't going to happen. You ain't going to mistake Paul for an Egyptian if Paul's a white person. You ain't going to have Moses be able to walk right, or be carried right into the house of Pharaoh and pass as one of his sons if he's a white baby. It ain't going to happen. So let's just get to the bottom line here, okay? They're brown-skinned people. Simple. But then you got the Christians out here that they went and the Catholics had changed that. They whitewashed the whole thing. And then you got people who are supposed to be getting back to the book, back to the truth. They're still trying to whitewash it. Yeah, maybe you should go home, not only read your Bible, but apply it to your life. Shalom. Why the black brothers and sisters don't understand that they are really of Yeshia because it's in their DNA that that DNA draws them to the Torah. And it's hard for me to understand that because I'm white and... The Ruach HaKadosh, which is the Holy Spirit, is the only person that thing that can do that is draw. But it's through the DNA that does that. And I understand that that they have had the church and they've had Jesus all their life and it's been ingrained in them. But it's time that we find out and accept it and receive it. And that's the only way that it can be received is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only thing that can draw the brothers and sisters in the Torah. And again, the DNA, it's in your DNA. And if you just think about it and pray about it and say, Holy Spirit, is this really of you or is this of some other thing that's not possible? And just let your heart be open and your mind be open and softened and just pray and find out whether this is true or not. So would you tell them who the true people of the Bible are? The black people. Say that again? The black people. <laughs> All right. And when I first came in the Torah and there was nothing but black people, and I just got kind of upset finally after, and I says, how come it's just the black people? Where do I belong? And it takes time, and we call it, um, I forgot the word completely. Revelation, and it takes time to be able to accept this. Look at how long it took you to go through Christianity. And it takes time for you, for the Holy Spirit to draw you into this and to give you the wisdom and knowledge that you are the true people of Israel. And I was duped. I always thought Jesus was white, and then I found out different. And again, just open up your heart and open up your mind and let the Holy Spirit really work with you. As time progressed, though, these paintings and the depictions went from the black African-American um, features to a more Caucasian white feature. And this wasn't done overnight. This was a slow sifting process as to what we have today. Now, in every church house and on their walls, we see a white Messiah. Uh, as we move forward, there is, after Noah come off the ark, and the sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the Sons of Ham is a guidepost that we can use to help us find the true Hebrews because the Sons of Ham, the true Hebrew Israelites, always blended with the Sons of Ham. And I'll give you many examples of this. As we read in Genesis 10, it gives the genealogy. And so we can see um, the beginning of the division of people. But the Egyptians come from their father Ham. In Palestine, if you look at some of the people that are descendants from long ago, they're black. 
Although we have other people of ethnic background moved into Palestine today, the people that intermingled with the true Hebrews, the Palestinians, uh, many of them are black. And they, that is from generations back. Uh, not only this, but the scripture states that in Amos 9 and 7 that the Hebrews are like the Ethiopian to him. Uh, if we look in Ethiopia, I would find that most people have no problem understanding that the people there are of black African nature. Now, the uh, sons of Ham, though, as we find in the scripture, we can see that Joseph blended with the sons of Ham because whenever his other brothers came to uh, receive goods and merchandise to take back to help their family, they did not know that it was Ham. Now this could not have went down if he was of another ethnic background, whatever color that may be, to blend with the black African-American Egyptian at that time. I'm sorry, they're not American at all, but the black African Egyptian. Okay, so Moses, and, and make sure to read the scripture as well, Moses blended with the sons of Ham, the Egyptians, because that they passed as their own people. We can find this recorded in Scripture. In Acts chapter 21, we find Shaul, um, Paul, passed as a uh, Egyptian and was asked this because he spoke Greek. At the you know, if a man spoke Greek and he was Caucasian color as me, the Roman soldier may have just thought hey, he's a Greek, but he had to ask him because the ethnic color. Yahushua fled into Egypt. Well, his mother and father took him into the land of Egypt uh, whenever Herod saw his life. This, therefore, uh, these people were able to blend and, you know, look the same. This is so important to understand because uh, not only is it found in Scripture, but even secular examples such as this right here, National Geographic, showed the black pharaohs of Egypt See, before the Arab people came in and took over what is modern-day Egypt now as an ethnicity, um, the people that was there beforehand were of African black characteristic. This is so important to understand because when history is erased by the following generations, that is what is history. Unless you do your due diligence and go back and search now, these things out. Moving see, forward, so. in modern Egypt, we find that the Egyptian premier Nasir spoke to the Israeli people at that time whenever they were returning to their said nation, and it was supposed to be the true Israelites. He said, you left black, you came back white, we cannot accept you. And you can see a quote put up here, right here, I'll put the quote up. Now that's not me, and once again I'm not trying to be racist, uh, anti-Semitic, or whatever you would want to label it. This is other people's statements. This is historical fact evidence. Hitler. I cannot think of a more murderous, sadistic, evil human being than Hitler. Nevertheless, Hitler provides us some very interesting uh, evidence that he knew as well who the true Hebrews was. In a film documentary that he showed to his generals that is documented in Time Life magazine, as you can check out for yourself, and also there's video links in the video description below, to uh, other uh, evidences of this where you can see the hard copy of the book being spoke of in the video. Now that doesn't mean that I endorse everything in those videos and other people's thoughts. I'm just showing you that this book does exist, nevertheless. In Time Life magazine, the uh, it was labeled, I believe the book was labeled the Nazis uh, from every time that I've ever seen it. I've only seen the book a couple times in my life so far, um, and I want to get a copy of it because uh, it's so powerful. Nevertheless, Hitler shows to his generals who the true Hebrews are and who the posers are. And he describes to his generals that the white face kind of, you know, I, people always say that I kind of look Jewish. Um, that, that's actually a fire statement because my background is Germanic, Russian. I have, you know, that is my ancestry. Well, we'll find out later in this video as I described to you that the Ashkenazi Jews uh, are from that region in the world. I'm not a Jew. I'm not an Israelite. I'm a Gentile that has accepted Messiah into my heart, Yahushua, to keep his commands, do his Torah and his Father's commands, and trust in him so that I may have eternal salvation. Now, Hitler explained the white person that was posing to be an Israelite as the bastard. 
And please forgive me, I mean not to be profane, I am describing exactly what was shown in the film. It also showed a African man of nature and facial feature, hair texture, as the true Hebrew. And it broke this down and digressed very deep. It went extremely deep. It was profound to me how much emphasis he put on explaining to his generals who the true Hebrew were. Moving forward from this, though, the Ashkenazi, it's very important that you understand who Ashkenazis are. They're not the real Hebrew. Matter of fact, a lot of them look like me, which I just told you. I'm not a Hebrew or a Jewish person or Israelite. I am a Gentile. I cannot reiterate that enough. In the 11th century, these people began to really take on the characteristics, try to um, personify themselves as if they were the true Hebrew, which it cannot be further from the truth. They speak something that's more along the lines of Yiddish. Uh, whenever I first began working in ministry, I wanted to learn to make sure I knew how to read, write, and understand and speak Hebrew so that I'd done exactly what the Master commanded, well, Hebrew and Gentile, in his commands. As a person that speaks English, I found that it was very imperative very quickly that I get back to the foundation and find out exactly what the Scripture said. As I went to a foreign language academy, one of the first things that got brought up to me was that I spoke kind of sounded Yiddish. I, I inquired as to what Yiddish was. I found out that it's kind of a Germanic language tone mixed with Hebrew. With my Germanic background and my own family's lineage, it made perfect sense to me, and I understood all of a sudden exactly what they were trying to say. In going to Hebrew school, this brought up an important point to me at that point, though, is why would that be the case? Because the Hebrew people should always have been the Hebrew people. Their tongues should not be something intermingled with other people. As we move forward in Genesis 10, verse 3, we find Ashakanaz. And that's actually, the people are actually explained in the scripture, where they're from, who they are. So they're not Hebrews. And the scripture itself attests to this. So these people are posers. At this point, whether a person wants to accept and acknowledge that or not, the written word is the written word. Neither you nor I can do anything to change that. Well, unless you're like the beast power in Rome and want to change times and laws, I guess you could probably attempt to change scripture as well, but I'm not Babylon. I'm a servant of the true Most High, and I want to do exactly what his word says. The true Hebrews will be regathered when Messiah returns. These people will be gathered out of all the nations abroad that they've been scattered amongst. The nation state of Israel right now, many people uh, refer to it as the terrorist nation state of Israel. I refer to it as the poser state of Israel because the people that are there, uh, most of them do not even acknowledge Messiah, nor do they even keep the Jewish faith. There are actually nothing more than people in a land that's not their own. That's just factual statement. Now, what I want to do now is I want to go to Deuteronomy 28. Because Deuteronomy 28, out of all the peoples and nations of the world, tongues, ethnics, and backgrounds, they define out one population of people that are more unique than any population of people up on the planet of Earth. They're the only people that meet these characteristics and therefore can be the only people that are the true Hebrews. So let us begin. And I will prove to you that it is the people that is defined as the African American that have been scattered abroad throughout the nation of the world because of the sins and transgression of breaking Master Yahweh's commands and their ancestors doing it. Leprosy is something that most people don't understand. If I got leprosy, you would never really know it. Why? Because it makes you white. Black people, it's very profound because you're black, and then you become white. Uh, this is something that you can't hide, okay? Um, nevertheless, that's why the leprosy in the day and time of the ancient biblical Hebrews, it was so profound because it does nothing for me. For you, it's life-changing and devastating, nevertheless. As we move forward throughout the, the scripture in Deuteronomy 28, and I encourage you to read the entire chapter in full context and look at exactly what I'm saying. Slavery is no nothing new to the African American people. You will find that if you're an African American, many of your ancestors were exactly that, slaves. It says in the scripture that they would be an iron, a yoke of iron put about your neck and that you would be turned into a slave. Well, that happened in bondage in the land of Egypt. And not only that, but here we'll find in shortly thereafter that the scripture says that you're going to be taken from Egypt in slave ships. And that's exactly what happened. 
and scattered all amongst the world. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Scripture says that you would take a wife and another would lie with it. How many women were raped during slavery and taken from their husbands and sold to someone else as a master and taken abroad? All right. They shall build a house, but you won't dwell in it. How many built the nation of the United States of America today, but you had your you have no part with it? You know, uh, you would plant vineyards, but you wouldn't eat the fruit thereof. Harvest it. There you go. You know, you worked and toiled in the fields. Your ancestors worked and toiled in the fields, but you had no part of it. The sons and daughters taken away. You know the. You'd long for them all the day long. Your eyes would fail for longing after them, and, and they're not to return. The slavery, the children would be born, they'd be uh, to a certain age, and they'd be sold. Okay? Uh, the, you'd be oppressed and crushed. A nation of people that's oppressed and crushed. Uh, not only that, but uh, it just uh, madness and blindness. You know, the, uh, I, I mean not to be racist when I say this, but I found some of the craziest stuff you find uh, in the African-American population, just pull up your pants, quit looking ridiculous. There's so many things that is just, um, that it's because of the sin of your ancestors that you do these things and what you do now. And I mean not to be racist, it's just the truth. Um, your carcass would be for the beasts of the field. You know, so many people uh, that were slaves just murdered and cast out, and the animals, the beasts of the field, and the fowls, the air ate your flesh. You shall fear day and night, you know, uh, the scripture said that, removed in all the kingdoms of the earth, if you look from the continent of Africa, where the, the, the Arabians called the, uh, the best of my knowledge that I could find from this, and I'll try to get, this is the only thing that I'm still trying to get a solid factual statement from the Arabic people, but it said that the Yahudim were a people accursed of their Elohim. And when they were sold off um, as slaves, that's what they were said. That was what would be said, and that whenever the slavery was taking place, that the uh, African American people, so far referred to, but you are the true Yehudim or Israelites, were spread abroad to the United Kingdom, to America, to Australia, all abroad. Your your people are spread all abroad, um, and will be regathered together again back into your land of Israel. You're spoiled and no man saves you. You know, I, I find out of all the peoples that are oppressed, especially in America, I find this interesting. That And once again, please, please do not define this as racism. But um, especially at the point in time we're at right now, illegals immigrating into the United States, um, foreigners abroad, even, even for me as a uh, white man, I found that when I became unemployed, it was very difficult on certain things. But I find for the, the most difficult people that have a hard time is probably the African American people. And I've wondered for many years why that was until I understood that you people were the true Hebrews under the curse of Deuteronomy 28. And that makes perfect sense. Um, the it scripture says that the stranger would be put above you and you would be put below. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've went into a McDonald's and other places abroad that it's the lowest of low jobs and that's where you find many of the true Hebrews. And once again, I mean not to be racist. You're, this is why you are under this ban is because of Deuteronomy and the curse of Deuteronomy 28. And, you know, Deuteronomy 30, if you read that chapter, it's a call for return. And I encourage you to keep his commandments. Believe on the Most High and accept his Son because you, if you do so, one day you will have back what your ancestors lost. One day you'll have all these things restored unto you again. And, you know, it's just like Isaiah 56 and Isaiah chapter 58. I hold so tightly to those chapters myself in the Scripture because I'm a Gentile. I long for the new kingdom. I want to be gathered to be a part of it. But you are a very specific people. And for those of you who are listening, such as myself, uh, like myself that are Gentiles, it's very important that we understand who the true Hebrews are. Because those that are posers in the land of Israel right now, until the times of the Gentile be fulfilled. These people will not inherit the, uh, the land of Israel. They're only here for a time being, for a short space. These people that are posers in the land will hold this, the land of Israel. They are not the true Hebrew, and they never will be. They're, the life is in the blood. I know who I am because I've done a DNA check, and it, it fulfilled everything that my ancestors, that, you know, my grandmother, uh, I, it, people don't refer and listen to the Ancient of Days anymore. They don't listen to their elders. I listen to the Ancient of Days and my elders, and I resource them as often as I could before they all passed away. 
And they told me who my people were, who my people were, where my blood come from. And when I done that DNA check and they tested it, it traced it just down the line, right down the line to my people, who the, my ancestors and my those that were ancient of days that were still alive with me told me exactly who they'd be. It went right line up on line. And I encourage you today that if you're under the sound of my voice to begin that journey. If you know, if these, right here, this statistics, this information that I've shared with you from scripture and from history, if you are compelled that you're one of those people, I encourage you to begin searching the scripture now because the time of restoration is coming. Uh, the last thoughts I would share with you as an individual is that I have many friends of every faith, ethnic, background, just about you could think of. I've told each and every one of the people that are my friends that are of African American nature um, and people that I come in contact with that are strangers unto me. Um, they're not strangers when we leave, though. I always make a point to you know, befriend everyone I can, but I have found that as I tell these people whom they are, that many of them acknowledge that that's exactly who they are. That brings me great joy because Time is drawing to the end, and the time for understanding biblical prophecy, understanding who the tr true biblical Hebrews are, understanding the commandments, the time frame for accepting Messiah, all these things are drawing very short to the end. And as a person that has prepared themselves for the sounding of the seven trumpets of Revelation, this is the most critical time in the history of humanity. There will never be a time of turmoil like there is taking place now ever be again. It's so important we have every single characteristic of end time prophecy in place, and one of those is knowing who the true biblical Hebrews are. Revelation uh, chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 2 and 3, and then we'll skip over to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I'm actually going to go ahead and start getting into the description of the Most High. So, Revelation 4 verses 2 and 3. Actually, hold up. Let me start in verse 1 because it was actually Christ that came and got John. He says, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Okay? So it's actually Christ speaking to John, and John's getting this vision. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, which I believe that's how you say it. It's also a sard stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight, like unto an emerald. Now, flip over to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose the Ancient of Days is the Most High, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So notice there in Revelation, it said that the Most High was to look upon like a jasper and a sard stone. Now the color of these stones range from a reddish brown or ruddy to almost black. So if you take that and then you add the woolly hair, which you guys can't come on here now and say, oh, it's talking about the color and not the texture. You know, you, I've had a million people come on and say that. But here it, it actually is talking about the texture because it says pure wool. So when you put these two together, Okay, the color of anywhere from a ruddy to black, and add the woolly hair, what do you get? And actually, they were pretty much right on when they had Morgan Freeman playing God in this movie. And this is actually just even more proof that Yeshia, or Christ, is black. Because in John 14, 9, Christ said that he that has seen seen me has seen the Father. And if you notice something in all these descriptions of the Most High of Christ, they all use stones or metals that are the same color as the so-called black race. Because even though you guys want to call them black, they're not. They're actually just different shades of brown. And also in Acts chapter 13 and verse 1, we see that the uh, 
prophets were also black. Acts chapter 13 and verse 1 it says, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. Now I have to be careful with this, but that Niger is actually where they get the so-called N-word that is used today. And you can look that up. In the Wiktionary, it pops right up when you type in that N-I-G-E-R. And it's actually a conspiracy because a lot of people want to try to say that uh, dark and black are two separate things. I have a publication from the Jehovah Witness. It's there inside on the scriptures. And when you look up that word Niger, it says from the Latin meaning dark, comma, black. So they're trying to say that those are two separate things when in actuality they mean the same thing. And if you look in the dictionary, and I'm just going to use the dictionary off my iPhone, when you look up the word black, it says extremely dark, of or belonging to a racial group having dark skin. Okay, that's the word black. Now, if you look up the word dark, it says having skin rich in melanin pigment. Now, if your skin is rich in melanin, then you are what's considered the so-called black race. And some Christians, especially the Jehovah Witnesses, say that Ham was the progenitor of those Arab people today. And in there, inside on the scriptures, under Ham, it actually proves that. It says, Ham was the father of four sons, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The Ethiopians, Egyptians, and some Arabian and African tribes. And that's actually why they had to remove the original people from that land and from Egypt and replace them with these people that have tans. Because, like I've touched on before, Christ had to go hide in Egypt. And the ancient Egyptians portrayed themselves as black. So, as you can see, if you took that picture of that so-called African-American child, and placed him among those Egyptians, he would have been hard to find. Now, if Christ had a tan, then he would have stuck out among the black Egyptians. And actually, an example of that is that I went to a wedding a couple years ago where I was the only white person there. And even though I'd been tanning, I was still easy to spot. And actually, um, those Arab people over there today are from Ishmael. And here in the Bible Dictionary, under Ishmaelite, it says, The word is apparently used in the Old Testament in a wider sense, referring to the nomadic tribes of northern Arabia. All Arabs, following Mohammed's example, claim descent from Ishmael. Now you can see from that picture, when you... Um, mix together those modern-day Arabs and those modern-day Jewish people, you can't tell them apart. And actually, another example of the deception is in the Song of Solomon. Now, I'm going to read from two versions. I'm going to read from the King James Version. Then I'm going to read from the Jehovah Witness uh, New World Translation. Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 1. <clears throat> Excuse me, says the Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Drop down to verse 5, says, I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me, because I am black. Now, when we go into the New World Translation, verse 1 says, the superlative song, which is Solomon. Verse 5 says, a black girl I am, but comely. O you daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, yet like the tent cloth of Solomon. Do not you look at me because I am swarthy. <laughs> now, as you can see in both of those, the first verse shows that this is Solomon speaking. 
So why in verse 5 would he call himself a black girl? And actually, if you don't look up that word swarthy, then you won't know that it actually means black. So now I showed how the ancient Egyptians were black. And also in Exodus 2, 19, Moses was mistaken for an Egyptian. In Acts 21, 38, Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian. So in order for these Israelites to be mistaken for black Egyptians, they themselves had to be black. And the Bible actually points out um, who all has a hand in this deception that's been going on from before the slave trade down to today. If you look in Psalms 83, we're going to read verses 3 through 8. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Now this is where he's going to start listing these nations. The tabernacles of Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, the Hagarenes, Gebal, and Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tyre, Asher also is joined with them. Now if you notice, the very first one listed was Edom, Esau, or the white, so-called white man, the Ishmaelites, which are the Arabs, Moab and Ammon, which are the Chinese and Japanese, and then some of those other ones are African tribes. So all these nations have taken crafty counsel to hide who the true Israelites are. And that's why the so-called white race here in America, they have no problem sending uh, aid to Africa. They send billions of dollars to those Jewish people in Israel. They send billions to the Egyptians, the Libyans, all these nations because They've all had a hand in this. They're all in it together. And I just wanted to get this out here because I cannot stress the importance of waking up to this truth. If you look around at all the things that are going on, all the flooding, the storms, all this stuff, these are all signs of the times that we live in. And like I said, I cannot stress the importance of waking up to this because um, the, the end is almost near. So I appreciate everybody for watching. Thank you.